Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand to give my views on this report, the report on devolution. Mr. Speaker, Nakuru Tower was my first workstation. say, and I quote, Serikali ya Nairobi ni ingine, full, clean town. In fact, we used to be taught in primary school that Nakuru was the cleanest railway station in East Africa. Those days, when we were learning geography, the history of the railways, and so so it has a history. It also, Mr. Speaker, has a history of big farmers. We used to be told the story of Delemere mounting his horse in Naivasha and driving it until it collapsed of thirst next to the lake in Nakuru and say, this is the boundary of my land now. He was the PC of Rift Valley. He was the alpha and the omega of raw power in the management of public affairs. And Nakuru, Mr. Speaker, developed a where a, f a member of parliament was charged, prosecuted, and jailed and lost his seat without a complainant the late Marka Mithaga. My brother from Pokot remembers all this because even his career was truncated in Nakuru at one time, at one time. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, if you go around the world, you find uh, towns much smaller than Nakuru that have city status. If you go to UK, you go to Cambridge is a city, it's a small town. You go to Norwich, it's a city, it's a small town. You go to Coventry, it's a city, it's a small town. Uh, you go to Australia, you go to small towns like Banbury in Western Australia, it's a city. Canberra, a small town, it's a city. So it is a question of what we really want. And I've looked at the report by the committee, and I don't know why my brother Moses Kajwan got carried away and made extravagant statements about the children that we were crying for. Because in the report, what he has written is different from what he said here. So I don't know what militated him to say those offensive words. But Mr. Speaker, confinement of a city comes with responsibility. To whom more is given, much more is expected. And if Nakuru goes to get a city status, it becomes our fourth city in the country. I can already see 
my close neighbors, Eldoret, misdescribing themselves as a city before we confer them the status. Even today in the papers, you are seeing Eldoret City Marathon is coming. I believe Mrs. seeking to become a city. The value of life in their midst, we should be able to make, Mr. Speaker, a situation where anybody driving from Kericho entering Nakuru sees the difference between a town and a city. Anybody driving from Naivasha entering Nakuru should feel the difference between the town of Naivasha and the city. And this, Mr. Speaker, you know in the old days in the UK, and the Mutula, I'm sure you remember this, you would not be conferred city status if you didn't have a cathedral, if you didn't have a public library, and if you didn't have good, well-managed public parks. For people to recreate, where is the Hyde Park of Nakuru? Where is the Central Park of Nakuru? Where is the city park of Nakuru? We want, Mr. Speaker, as this status comes, greater responsibility must be bestowed on the shoulders of the managers of Nakuru, not to exert brutality on the citizens to create space for these facilities, but to acquire space and create these facilities for the citizens of Nakuru. I was horrified, Mr. Speaker, the amount of brutality I saw meted on people who had invested on railway land in Nakuru. It was horrifying. And some of them have come to consult me, Mr. Speaker, uh, in dual capacity as a leader and as a lawyer. And you look at their papers, they had long-term leases from railways. They had paid railways rent for the land. Railways had concurred with their development programs together with the municipality and some had leases for as long as 50 years. If the destruction of property was meant, Mr. Speaker, to accelerate this confinement, then it was a wrong turn. And it shouldn't be encouraged. I hope those people whose properties were destroyed have exercised their rights and gone to courts of law because the documents I've seen from some of them have not only arguable cases but overwhelming cases for compensation, particularly from Kenya Railways. Mr. Speaker, I want to urge the managers of Nakuru, including my friend's daughter, Senator Susan Kihika, that now you must exhibit your leadership. We don't want, Mr. Speaker, and I'm sure my brother from West Pokot, and even Murkomen, when they drive home from Lanet to drive through Nakuru town, takes you two hours, sometimes even three. You remain on the same spot for one hour. A small town that can't manage traffic. We hope Senator Susan and your team, I know you and the governor are running in opposite directions politically, <laughs> but I hope, <laughs> I hope <laughs> that the leaders of Nakuru must now start expanding facilities and services to make Nakuru a place to be. I've seen signposts all over in Nakuru, you say, the county of unlimited opportunities. I hope some of those unlimited opportunities are not traffic jams. Because if the harm is a speaker, then it is not a plus, it's a minus. I want Mr. Speaker to urge Nakuru to live to its old building. 
as a truly cosmopolitan city. Mr. Speaker,